Where is he? Where are you? Skull Rock. Uh, do you know it? Hello, everyone. We are broadcasting live from Skull Rock. This is Stacy, and I am joined by... Hello, this is Megan, your co-host for the Skull Rock broadcast. And we are also joined by... Hi, my name's Brandy. I'm happy to be here. Yay! Hi, Brandy. <laughs> How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. Well, happy to be here. <laughs> How are you doing, Stace? I'm, you know, I'm not feeling too good. I'm a little under the weather, but, um, you know, it's a day that ends with why. So we're just going to see how we get through this. I'm very excited for this episode because Brandy is my very, very good friend. And she was with me in Philadelphia when we met you in person for the first time. And kind of me and Brandy, like we've followed each other over Instagram and bonded over horror movies and VHS tapes for years. But what really like kind of built this friendship was our fandom for Stranger Things, Joseph Quinn, Joe Keery. And um, she was actually with me the two times I met Joseph Quinn. Yes, um, New Orleans and Philly. I also uh, met him in Dallas, but Philly was by far the best for so many reasons. Yeah, not just me being there. <laughs> of course. Um, you know, even with this stuff with his, uh, I think it was work visa, put that aside. Like, it wasn't nearly as crowded, I don't feel like which made it like the experience better. I feel like we got through the lines quicker. And this time, like in NOLA, we waited so long that I feel like by the time we got to him, he was spent. Mm -hmm. But in Philly, we were there, I think probably within the first hour. Yeah, you guys saw him super early, I think. That was awesome. And I feel like that was a different experience to, to get him like fresh and not seeing his 2000th person. Yeah. Yeah. Smiling awkwardly at him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's such a trooper. I love that he does that for the fans because it's just a cool experience. You know, and I feel like having met him a few times now, each experience is a little bit different, but he's just so damn likable. Yeah. Yeah. And I had also met you on Instagram and talked to you before the convention a little bit. And I know you had gone to Atlanta right after I was there. So that was cool to kind of like send you some of the places and hear how it went for you. <laughs> so we have you on the podcast today. I mean, obviously, because we've pretty much mentioned you almost every episode, I think. <laughs> so <laughs> we had to have you on eventually. But can you tell us a little bit about what you wanted to talk to talk to us about today? So kind of like the Stranger Things music and the, you know, the 80s in particular. Uh, I've always been listening to 80s music, so that's not really new to me. But the soundtracks that they have and some of the songs that they've used throughout the series are just great great songs and so I go to Spotify and I've kind of become obsessed with making these playlists mm -hmm. and kind of bringing it all together you know in a number of different ways like a number of uh different playlists for people to enjoy so her playlists are literally because she has such a diverse like taste in music she's even recommended like um Motown classics which were really big you know with my parents growing up and it's just pure serotonin when you have somebody that is such you know, has such a passion for music and they almost like exactly know like kind of what songs remind them of this character, you know, and what kind of, you know, you could see playing in a scene with them. Yeah. So, yeah, we were super excited to talk to you about music also because Stacy and I love the music and Stranger Things and also just music in general. Also, I feel like Stacy's always referencing like little music cues from like other movies that she notices that they kind of borrowed, which is really cool. And I like making playlists too. And I've listened to some of yours already and they're so good. Can you tell everybody the Steve Harrington playlist that you made? <laughs> yes. So actually like you and Stacy are part of the creation of that playlist name. It's um, okay. Yeah, totally. <laughs> bullshit boobies and baby girl. We joked about um, us uh, doing a podcast and calling it that. 
<laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and it was like all it would be all about Steve. Um Yeah. That's basically a huge topic of this <laughs> podcast anyway. I actually just went on Spotify today and recommended your playlist, that playlist. Oh, nice. I don't know exactly how it works. So if you're listening to this on Spotify, it should link right to that playlist, which is all songs that kind of remind us of Steve Harrington, our fave. Thank you. Yeah, he's a straightforward kind of uncomplicated dude. Brave, beautiful, heartbroken. <laughs> the tragic hero. Yeah, sure. exactly. So, Brandy, can you tell us what made you a fan of the show Stranger Things? So, long story short, I didn't have Netflix and I had a quirky coworker recommend it to me. So, the, when I did get it, the first thing I watched um, when I got Netflix was Stranger Things. And I think I binged the first two seasons and it was adorable i mean the kids are were just adorable and it's such a good story but i don't think i got really obsessed and kind of like got the fever until there was that like long hiatus between the second and third season and the kids kind of grew up and the third season was just one like one of it's my favorite season and steve in that outfit the whole, <laughs> the whole scoop of the boy. boy. Yeah. <laughs> Season three was such a fun time. I, and I think, like you said, it just became like a pop culture phenomenon. Like, I mean, even from season one, but season three, like the promo and the, um, is that the season where they did like the Baskin Robbins, like turned into scoops Ahoy and stuff like that. So that was really cool. So you feel like you became a big fan a much bigger fan, yeah. With season three, yeah. yeah. And then after season four, did it get even more? Well, that's Stacy's fault. I, <laughs> you know, I, lo I did. I absolutely loved it. But um, I don't think anyone loved it as much as Stacy did because that summer, her entire feed was nothing but Eddie Munson <laughs> for months. And then I was like, oh, man. And then one night I woke up and I had a dream about him. And the next day I DM Stacy and I was like, I had a dream about your boy. <laughs> so, and we have literally talked every day since. And I think that was like a year and a half ago. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. So let's let Brandy go first. What are some of your favorite songs featured in the show? Are we going by season or just in general? I'd say just in general, sum it up. Just, yeah, so any any season. Definitely the journey, the, the separate ways. At the end of, I think it's what, the eighth episode of season four? Yeah, at the end of the eighth where they're kind of all, and you know what I kind of really love about that scene is like they're all, they're all kind of grappling with that what they're about to do is a reality. And, you know, some of them, you know, look pensive and some of them look outright scared. But the music really goes to that and kind of builds to this crescendo. And it was just really well done. I remember it dusted in that scene, uh, scene in particular. It looks terrified. A friend of mine who also really likes Stranger Things, she has kids. And they were listening to the soundtrack, like, of the show. And she said that her son, who's, like, four or five, was, like, they were listening to that song and like the the remix of it that they did for the show and he said to her like it sounds like they're going to fight a monster <laughs> like a child who like haven't hasn't even seen the show like that song was just hit the nail on the head yeah yes <laughs> Like, Damn. they're going to fight a monster <laughs> like that's such an underrated journey song anyways i know everybody always thinks of don't stop believing separate ways that's a banger is there a soundtrack like an official soundtrack for season two i believe so i know it's come out on i think they combined season one and two on vinyl and cassette with cd there's instrumental and then there's the like pop songs which, Brandy, you probably know this. What's the song that plays after they find Will's body and Hopper stays outside of Joyce's house? Because it's like, don't walk away in silence. Oh, I'm Welcome definitely in. leaving this in. <laughs> <laughs> Shit! <laughs> yeah. You're welcome, everybody. Stays with a 100-degree fever. 
So we took a long time trying to figure that out. Yes. <laughs> but what is that song? It is Atmosphere by Joy Division. So, you know, Joy Division, which that would make sense because that's kind of under Jonathan's like forte of what he would be into, you know, so that that tracks. Kind of a weird song, <laughs> you know? Yeah. If you, if you know their music, I don't know. I'm not as familiar with them. Mm-mm. No. But yeah, it's um, it's kind of a weird tune. Well, we got to hear Stacey sing it very well. <laughs> <laughs> the score is so good, too, though. Oh, my God. By Kyle um, Dixon, Dixon, right? Dixon and Michael Stein. Yes. Fantastic. And I love that they really, like, you know, kind of, like, synth music they were bringing it back and if you notice now it's featured in a lot more shows a lot more movies that style of music which i've always been a fan of i'm a huge tangerine dream fan and you know they even sample tangerine dream in season one when jonathan and steve are fighting um just i don't know that kind of music i've always loved and i'm sure you guys as well so not only does the score give you chills it kind of i did love and i know some people didn't like it but i loved that you know, their budget got bigger so they could use more popular and more songs, more music as they continued going. The soundtrack only has like a limited amount, but then like they have little clips of songs. Like I was trying to figure out what song that is playing when Benny and Eleven are eating. It was only a tiny little clip of it. And like you can't hear enough of the lyrics, but I did just find it on this whatsong.com and it's a song called I Shall Not Care by Pearls Before Swine. But that whole scene and that whole episode, like I I really like White Rabbit by Jefferson Airplane. I just see the connections to like Alice in Wonderland and like those lyrics in that song throughout the whole like show really so I think it was cool that in the very first episode of the show they used that song but there's like a bunch of really good music playing in Benny's diner and I think it's because he's got like music playing in the diner like that's what you're supposed to be hearing what are some other of your favorite musical moments Stace I would have to say like you know to jump ahead I it took me two rewatches, but when I realized that Spellbound by Susie and the Banshees was picked as the closing credits for season four, I was like, the Duffer Brothers are fucking geniuses. Like just summed it up perfectly. And um I really like Susie and the Bans Banshees, but Spellbound just chills every time I hear that and I always think of the show now. Obviously, Master of Puppets. At first people were like, Oh, it could be the final countdown. Nothing against that song, but I just thought this was 10 times better. And if you listen to the lyrics, it tracks with the plot. And I would have laughed. I would have thought of Arrested Development if I had heard the final countdown. Yeah, that's used way too much in, like, popular culture. Yeah, I like think. in pizza like, commercials. Like, you know. And why would Eddie be playing that on the guitar? Like, <laughs> that is offensive. <laughs> like, offensive. You can't say most metal thing ever like after <laughs> that song like exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah i'd be like what the <laughs> hell was that i really liked detroit rock city i'm not a huge kiss fan but i loved it being featured in the scene with the basketball and the D and D. and then going all the way back to season two and season one i loved the little clip of shout at the devil by motley Crue while billy's doing the keg stand he just looks beautiful and um, Hazy Shade of Winter, which plays when uh, Nancy and Steve do the nasty and Barb is a uh, barbecue. But up bump. Yeah, that's that's another song that I I like pay attention to the lyrics and it's like talking about seasons and time. And I'm like, ooh, what's going on here? Like, this is the first time like the Demogorgon comes out and gets Barb. Right. So it's like is it going to be like a connection to time travel i'm always like time travel <laughs> so i definitely think we're going to get time travel in season five <laughs> fingers crossed he was teasing us with that old copy of a wrinkle in time and and that i guess it was story of his yes yes have you read it have you read that book so i've read that book albeit three years ago and, and i i hated it and i really feel like i read blurbs of it when i was a kid i 
haven't read it since I was like a child, but I remember liking it as a kid. It's easier for your brain, like your imagination to go there as a child. But as like a 40, a 40 year old, I was like, this is absolute nonsense. But I brushed up on it. Okay. I'm excited to hear about this. There are some nuggets in there. Ooh, tell us. So you sent me the the synopsis, but I haven't read it yet. So give me some some highlights. When you read over that, you're going to like, I understand why she feels like this is gibberish to an extent. However, now there are some things like the whole premise of the book is like they're traveling through time. And I think they pronounce it as like a tesseract. And I think it's alluding to with the Duffer brothers how because they keep saying you're going to figure out why the upside down is stuck on that date. It happens in a wrinkle in time, too, where it's stuck. Yeah. Wherever they go, it's like being able to like rift into a parallel universe whenever they're done doing whatever they're doing and fighting whoever they're fighting out there. When they come back, they come back to the moment before they left. Oh, so I feel like they're kind of playing on that. Like we're going to find out why it's stuck on that. Okay. And then there's other parts where like one of them becomes paralyzed, which to me is Max. Oh, Max. Yeah. And then one of them is able to like bring them back and free them with love. Hmm. So I don't know, maybe Elle's going to come in there and do some things. I don't know. You can see the parallels. And it also comes back to like, there's this it that can get inside your brain. Like Vecna. Kind of like that. And I think that's alluding to Will, too. Ooh, interesting. When it's cold, I like to die. Or Don't even. <laughs> Whenever that pops up, I literally go, nope. And I switch the song. Nope. It's Peter Gabriel, Heroes, when they find his body in the quarry. Yeah. When do they play that in season one? Is it when they find Will? When they try to resuscitate him in the Upside Down, Hopper and Joyce. Okay. Do they successfully resuscitate him? They do. They do. It's a heavy scene. And then as soon as that shit started playing in season four with Dustin and Eddie, the look on my fucking face, I was like, so here we go again, Moby. Like, nope. (laughs) Right, but that connection there, like, Will was okay. I'm so I'm going to stay in this delusional okay. state. Everything's great. <laughs> Everybody looks great. Everybody's doing great. That's such a sad song, though. Susie and Dustin singing Never Ending Story is definitely a great moment. But in season four, when, is it Will? Or Mike, who figures out that they should go find Susie. Like, they're standing in the desert, and... It's well, because he starts singing it. Yeah. Yes, that's what I was going to say. He's he's trying to, like, get Mike to remember, and he starts singing the never any stories. Like, I thought that was hilarious. They all have PTSD <laughs> from that song now. Yeah. <laughs> How they, like, called it back, though. Like, yeah, was, it was part funny. See, I love when, like, they're packing up. Lucas and Max are teasing him. That's a great part, too. I forgot about that. Him telling them they're so funny they could be on Carson, (laughs) which you know most of the audience didn't get. It's so good. And both of them, by the way, can sing really well. I'm pretty sure I remember Lucas, like, really having a voice. It is pretty impressive singing when Lucas It was pretty good. ...are singing it. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Now, that letter from Hopper at the end was heavy, so you needed some... Oh, my gosh. ...comedic release to, like, balance it out. Oh, have you seen where the outfits that they're wearing, it's, like, the same outfits as that 70s show? I have seen that. Yep. Isn't that weird? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's, like, an exact... What are their names? I don't remember. Eric. Donna and Eric. So, like, it's, like, the same outfits that Donna and Eric, like, wear a lot on that 70s show is what Max and Lucas are wearing at the end of season three. And they used a lot of great music intros with season three. Like, I liked that they played the same score um, from the cars moving in stereo, like the Fast Time scene when you see Billy and all the horny housewives watching him walk in slow motion. I thought that was pretty funny. So, Brittany, what would you say are, like, your top musical moments, okay? Like, scenes that involve music from all four seasons. You know, you can pick a couple. Which ones really stood out to you? I mean, I I hate to be the obvious, but, like, the whole running up that hill, and it's used so many different times in the season, but the whole ending and the slowing of it down and, like, Hopper with the sword 
and when he's like fighting that demogorgon and it slows down and it i mean that it's just so epic and so good when he picks up that sword that's really cool i get chills every time especially when the music picks up when the co- molotov cocktail hits vecna it goes up you know like whoa the other cool thing is is like if maybe you're tired of kate bush's version which i can't imagine but if you are meg myers does an incredible cover um of that song and i think she actually hit fairly decent with it about a year before season four came out i added a bunch of songs to that playlist and a bunch of covers of some of the songs that we talked about or talking about in case anybody's interested in that 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 version will will be there too cool thank you yeah and thank you for putting together a playlist for everything that we talked about on the show I also like the um, the placebo cover. I had told Stacy at one point that they use that in the Vampire Diaries. So yes. <laughs> when I first yes. heard it, I was like, wait, I know this song from somewhere. That's such a different version. Like, it's a lot more, I don't know, slow, I guess. Yeah. It's still very good, but it's, it's very, I would say all three of them are very, very different from each other. But I like how you said that that, was just kind of a theme that kept coming back throughout the show because don't yes. isn't she listening to it at the very beginning in her walk in the school when she's walking down the hallway yeah, yeah she's you can hear it then yeah. as well and now we get it in her big scene in Dear Billy and then again uh, in the finale what do you guys think you know like I love 80s music but if it does take place in the 80s, we really can't guess because we have no idea what year it's going to take place. So you could be saying all these bands that weren't out yet, you know, like that's the tricky thing right now. We can't even guess the soundtrack yet because we don't know when it's really taking place. Yeah. I mean, we've got most of the 80s, especially if it's going to be in 80, even 87 or 89, like most of the 80s have gone by. So and I've said before, I think how I like that they use like older music too like when they steal the rv and it's like ccr i think is playing (laughs) and then even after that when what's the song that's playing fire and rain oh one of my favorites yep yeah yeah well i felt like we were giving season two like the short end of the stick here so i'm looking at some of the music in season two and there there's rock you like a hurricane with billy that's that's a good moment i think so that whole kind of like hair band kind of glam band like he's that dude (laughs) you know what i mean like like almost to perfection that whole character is, is what i picture when i think of dudes who love that type of music and he and he did such a good job oh my god Listening to the four horsemen, right, of Metallica as he's getting ready and shoving the cologne down his pants. I yeah. think so. That, that's a scene I remember. Ghostbusters in season two. Like, that's a big, like, the Ghostbusters theme. You'll love this, uh, Megan. So a couple of years ago, my sister goes, hey, Stacy, because it was around Halloween. She goes, do you have that CD that mom burns that has like Thriller, which was featured in the season two trailer? And she goes, and Ghostbusters and all those, you know, spooky songs. And I go, Alexis, that wasn't on a CD. That was on a cassette. We're old. What song is playing at the Halloween party, Stacy? First, there's uh, Shout at the Devil, then Girls on Film. Yeah, I, I feel like I think of the Duran Duran song. Because Steve looks so happy dancing. Like, yes. His, his girl is tipsy. Life is going good. It's like <laughs> moments before disaster, you know? A little, I guess, Easter egg, they call it. At the party with Steve, there's a girl there, the Halloween party, there's a girl there dressed up as Susie Sue. Oh, wait, that's who she is? She talks to Jonathan. He thinks she's from Kiss, right? Yes. Yes. Pretty well done. (laughs) It's a pretty good job. It's a great costume. Like, (laughs) a lot of makeup. Okay, Brandy. So what are some of your favorite characters from the show? And then I guess we can talk about songs that remind you of those characters. Yes. So Robin, 
you know, back to Susie Sue again. My, my, I, I think there are so many of their songs that fit. Like they're just some kind of quirky and weird and a little different. And that's, that's how I picture her. So Kiss Them For Me, um, Happy House, Christine, Cities in the Dust. There's like endless amounts of them. It's the type of thing that like there's some of them, they like immediately you're like, wow, this is great. And then other ones are like, this is weird. This is different. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like Hong Kong Garden. I don't know if you have you heard that one. Mm -mm. Oh, boy. The first couple rounds with that, you're like, this is kind of weird. <laughs> But by the hundredth time, it like, I don't know, it makes sense. You love it. And then I think you had some for 11. Yes, that was the Yeah, Yeah, Yeah's Heads Will Roll. And Kim Petrus, I believe, if I'm saying that correctly. And that song is called There Will Be Blood. And they're both kind of like these high energy, loud kind of like bad bitch songs. She's such a badass. Yeah, she really is. She is. When I ask like kids at school, a lot of times if it's like a girl who watches Stranger Things, even some of the boys, like if I ask them their favorite character, a lot of them say Eleven because she's just like the hero of the show. She is the the hero for those those little boys since season one. I rewatched the episode the other day where she saves Mike and like we do not talk about that enough. Like when he he is literally about to jump off that he he jumps that's literally one of my all-time favorite moments throughout all four seasons and i love and i know we brought this up before that the same music cue she'll kill you is featured when she defeats vecna i was like full circle Mwah. chef kiss it's all gonna come even more full circle i think and blow our absolute minds like i can't wait <laughs> for season five the duffers are definitely milking it and, and rightfully so i mean but i've said that i've said that to stacy before i think i would do the same thing like we are doing the same thing like we're we're we want to just like draw this out and experience it as much as we can because it's never going to happen again like so i mean we're literally making a podcast about it while we wait like things i had heard and, I, and again i'm not as like as current maybe as you guys are on some of this info but i believe uh one of them had posted that like as far as prequels that there are some of them you know if they do happen that there are certain characters that we won't see again and in this the season five is the end of their story. And I believe that was Hopper Dustin, which I was kind of crushed yeah. with that one. Uh, and Lucas. And there was one more. And I, I, for some reason, it eludes me. Did you see that anywhere? It was weird because I don't know if they were just like naming off some characters or if they really were like intentionally saying like, these are the characters who will not be like they're trying to throw us off too maybe, maybe. <laughs> you know i feel like if they have spinoffs planned with certain it would only be with like certain characters so i feel like they would already know so pretty much any other character is going to be pretty much done and especially with hopper and stuff because they are like in the already in the prequel for, for the first shadow And it's had like pretty decent reviews. Like I keep seeing all that, um, which is great, but it's kind of upsetting because it's like, okay, well, when am I going to get to see, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, are, are you bringing it here or what are we doing, guys? I, I hope we get it like by the end of the year in New York. Like, that's what I think. That's my prediction. <laughs> yeah. And I think if it's that important, we need to see it before season five. Because, I mean, people could look it up and ruin it and just know, like, the spoilers of it. But you would think that they would not want everybody to experience it. Mm. So, I don't know. Maybe we'll get it on Broadway and then, like, streaming before season five comes out. That would be good. What about Max? What were some of the songs that you had thought of for Max? Yeah, so uh, Control by Garbage. They are one of my favorite bands, um, and they just have an, a spectacular uh, discography. But the cool thing with Garbage is that uh, the lead singer, Shirley Manson, is a huge 
Susie Sue fans. Ooh, okay. So she actually covers City in the Dust. Um, I think she did that a year or two ago. And that is also on the playlist there where you'll find the Mac song as well. So everything comes back to Susie Sue. <laughs> there is another song that I have, I only know about this from like fan fictions that have used it, but people say that Robin, for some reason, would have really liked Private Idaho by the B-52s. But have you ever read the lyrics to that? Don't go on the patio. Beware of the pool. Blue bottomless pool. It leads you straight right through the gate that opens on the pool. Interesting. <laughs> like, um, Duffer Brothers? <laughs> Hello? Like, what is going on? That's what, I, that's what I mean about, like, these lyrics and these songs just make my brain go, like, wait a second. Like, what are you doing here? That song is about Steve's pool. It's about Steve's pool, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> Those lyrics are insane. I mean, everything B-52s is like weird and, and quirky and kind of upbeat. But those lyrics, I don't think like I ever really paid attention to them in like a coherent way. It has to connect, like, right? That is an awful lot of coincidences. I know. It's like, is that like their favorite band or something? <laughs> like, the Duffer Brothers were on to you. <laughs> the B-52s. <laughs> it's just so strange with all of their... And I know you guys have discussed this stuff in the past about like Nightmare on Elm Street and then Nightmare on Elm Street 3 and, and it, the movie and the book and all the things that they've openly admitted. Like we've gotten so much of our stuff from Stephen King and... yeah. It's insane when you really think about it. Like, there are references everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I think it's intentional. I think it's it, to drive us insane. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's I think it's just fun for them to, like, see if people notice kind of thing. So hopefully they're happy with the fact that we do notice. <laughs> when I was listening to Susie and the Banshees, they have a cover of Dear Prudence that came on. It was so good. <laughs> I love the Beatles and um the um Susie and the Banshees covers better than the Beatles, in my opinion. Yeah. And it's pretty it's pretty popular. I'm like obsessed with the movie Across the Universe, which is all like Beatles songs. Brady loves that movie. <laughs> I like I came out my junior year of college, I think. And I just remember like watching it multiple times and then like making people watch it <laughs> multiple times like and being really obsessed with it but like it's all covers of Beatles songs and it's the actors like singing and everything too but I like the Dear Prudence in that movie it's really good but that cover the Susie and the Banshees cover was really good like I think I heard that I mean not I'm not a huge Beatles fan but I think I even heard that version before had the yeah, there's version. probably some people who don't even, like, know it's a Beatles song. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I feel like that's the case with some covers. If the cover is really popular, you don't even realize it's a cover unless you're a fan of um, the original band. And you actually have a whole playlist of covers. I, I do. Um, it's funny. I think that one's maybe 130, 150 songs in. And I mean, there's a, there's a lot of across the universe on there. And it's funny because when I was making it, I'm like schooling my husband and he's like, this is a cover. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> so many songs he had no idea. And then I had to like play him the original. Yeah. <laughs> there's also some fun Metallica covers on there. Mm. And they are done very differently than how they've done them. And they're sung by women. That's awesome. And they're magnificent. There's a woman who does it called Lissy, L-I-S-S-I-E, and she does cover her covers are spectacular. So you can find them on there, too. If you're really looking to, you know, m most of these covers are more like taking the song in a completely different direction than just kind of repeating what the original artist did. Speaking of other playlists and speaking of Metallica, you also have an uh, Eddie Munson playlist. Yes, I feel like people will be very excited about this. So before, well, after JQ 
hit the crazy stardom. He did not have his spot, and people are nuts, he did not have his Spotify private. So um, people found it, and he had an Eddie Munson playlist there. And luckily, some people took screenshots of everything that was on it, because then he went and made um, most of his playlist private. But I was able to find it on YouTube and recreate it on my Spotify page under and it, you know, very aptly titled Eddie Munson playlist. <laughs> okay, so that's the Eddie playlist that you have. That's what it is. That makes it really cool too, because it's what he was listening to to kind of get into character. So that's awesome. And it's what you would expect it to be. You know, it, it's it's Judas Priest and Dio and Metallica, um, Pantera, the usual suspects that you you would think. So. There's even some misfits and Bowie in there, but not too much. Oh, I think that you had a song that you wanted to talk about for our boy, Steve. Oh, yes. Foreigner. (laughs) Which foreigner song? Poor, poor Steve. (laughs) Um, I want to know what love is. Like, he's that guy, (laughs) you know, like he's in his room and he's upset and he's crying and he's hot while he's doing it and all of that (laughs) that's yeah that's like the perfect breakup song and his hair is (laughs) perfect so when he left the halloween party that's what he was listening to right (laughs) right by lover's lake (laughs) he drove out to the quarry put it in his cassette player (laughs) cried yep Oh, Stacey, is there any merch for this week? We almost forgot about that. Yes, actually, I wanted to bring up this really great company that is on both Etsy and Instagram. They're called Fandom Munder, M-U-N-D-E-R, and they are the people that are responsible for all those really cool pins that I usually put on my headbands. They've done a whole line of Stranger Things characters, Steve, they've done Robin and Steve, different Eddies, Max and Lucas. They're so adorable, and they're the most friendliest people out there, but definitely go check them out. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm definitely going to check them out. I love those pins that you put on your headband. They're so cool. You have, like, a a lot of Steve, right? I have a ton of Steve. In fact, I wore my family video one not too long ago, and everybody was like, what the hell is that? And then the people who got it got it. They were like, that's adorable. So (laughs) love accessorizing with my favorite characters. So let's talk about filming updates real quick. So I guess we haven't really gotten anything new from Raw Stuffer since we last recorded. No, I don't think there's been anything new. Amy Beth McNulty was filming, I guess. So the Stranger Things TV account shared some of her like personal photos in their broadcast channel. Mostly just hospital stuff, I think. There was a little video from her. We did get one photo of Maya in a hospital yeah. room, in hospital room 110. So people hmm. were speculating whose room that was, 110. I mean, probably Max's. Probably but, towards Max, but you never know. Yeah, you never know. And it's a spoiler, I guess, a little bit, but they have a new set. It looks like a farm. Did you see that? Yep. I feel like most franchises kind of do that, where it's like, forget everything you've ever learned. It all goes back to the beginning. None of these things matter. And I don't know, I feel like in a way it almost kind of simplifies itself and it goes back to kind of its root. From the first few seasons. Yeah, Yeah. because they're bringing back the junkyard. And that was like officially on the Raw Stuffers account, I think. And then I think there were people saying that they were filming at the cabin again. Did you get to go to the cabin when you were there, Brandy, in Atlanta? I did not. Like, I I regrettably did not have as much time as I wanted. Plus, it's like a um a booking situation. You need to book it ahead of time. Yeah, yeah. So it's a it's like a farm. Also, they have like pumpkin picking in the fall, and it's a Christmas tree farm. But the cabin itself, they have an escape room in the cabin, and then they have also like escape woods experiences just on the property but I when I went the escape room was sold out for like the day we wanted to go but you could just email them and set up a time for just a tour so I went and it was like 
really it was pretty much like a private tour it was these young girls that work there i think we paid like 20 bucks each there might have been like another couple or something like that at the same time but they just walked us over to the cabin let us explore raw stuffer has shared photos at the cabin it was before I think filming officially started I was like oh I know exactly where he is there was like a deer on the wall I was like that's the cabin like that's the escape room cabin and they told us and then again this was like before the writer's strike before it was delayed and everything but the girl said that like a, a scout had been out like looking at the location again to sort of decide if they were going to use it again for season five and they expected that they were going to be using it so it was really cool and they appreciate the visitors but they just appreciate the people that like reach out the appropriate way and don't try to just sneak onto their private property and we're, they were telling us like stories of people who try it and it's just like really frustrating and annoying for them because like they're just you know employees and then if there's like people just wandering around that's not safe for like the employees you have some place, asshole you know. dressed up as a demogorgon like <laughs> falls into a ditch or something they're gonna get sued yeah and that person's name is stacy no, i'm just kidding yep. <laughs> oh well it was so fun having you on the podcast today brandy this was I think one of the most fun <laughs> podcast episodes to record so far. So, yeah, we had a blast. Thank you for joining us. It was my pleasure. I had a great time. Thank you. Good. Good. You're welcome. Hopefully we'll have you back again sometime soon. I would love it. So we are we are all done for today. We're signing off. Find us on social media at Skull Rock Broadcast. Oh, and find you can always find me at Steady Stories, Stacy at Stay Still Reviews, and Brandy is Days in the Phoenix. All right. Over and out. Over and out. We are back for our secret segment about Steady, which these two have been trying to talk about since the beginning. <laughs> like holding back two dogs. And just going, I'm sorry. <laughs> so if you don't like to interact with fan fiction, the episode's over. What are you still doing here? And if you do, <laughs> we're here to talk about it with you. So let's talk about songs. Yes. That reminds you of Steady, since this is our music episode. You want to start, Brandy? Sure. Um, I got I got quite a few of these. Bad Love by Sleeping Wolf. So good. It's such a good song, and it's like it's almost like upbeat, kind of like pop wave. And the whole premise of the song is like, you know, give me the bad stuff. You know, yeah, that good bad stuff. That's so good for the two of them. I feel like they're always. I don't know. Stacey and I love the fix where it's like a slightly un unhealthy relationship, but they like work through their bad stuff together. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of those. I mean, I mean, it was the 80s. It wouldn't have been an easy relationship. So no, no. I like the ones that are realistic in that way that like kind of don't just gloss over the hardships and stuff that they would have faced being a couple in the 80s. So. I have another one, which is 90s coded. Um, it's uh, Jamie Walters, uh, Hold On. Mm. And if you if you listen to the lyrics, they're 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 simple, but they're but they're sweet. It's, you know, basically like hold on for another day. Like you're never alone. I'm here. You know, that that type of thing. Um, and, and he just has such a beautiful voice and it's done so well. Yeah. So I, I have that on that playlist, too, if anybody wants to give that a, a go. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to listen to that one, too. There's another one. I feel like it's more Eddie coded or just because, like, I'm biased, but works for them totally as a couple. And it's called Wonderful by Adam Ant. Mm. 
it's so good and it's basically like if you look at the lyrics it's kind of just talking about like did i forget to tell you that you're wonderful like of all the things that go on did i forget to t that you know did i say i didn't cry i lied you know what mm -hmm. i mean and it, it's kind of like where you're like hiding your emotions and maybe not being transparent yeah no that definitely fits for them yeah oh yeah um i love the whole tears for fears like the whole fandom <laughs> loves tear, tears for fears for steady um recently i've been listening to a lot of bruce springsteen which i think is very steve oh, coded yeah. Yeah. yeah so that's fun also i love when fix like talk about steve really liking abba like <laughs> and Blondie. <laughs> yeah and yeah. madonna like i feel like all of those fit for him for sure well, we get steve on the bruce springsteen with with his ass and the hat Somebody did a they did an somebody edit did an edit of it, but that's I have to send you the fix. Steve dresses up like Bruce Springsteen on that cover for Halloween. <laughs> Woo! And Eddie like realizes, oh shit, like <laughs> I'm into this beautiful guy. man. Yeah, this is my awakening. Yep. Oh no, Judas Priest. Oh, okay, yep. I have to say, Eddie's taste in music is not my wheelhouse. Metallica aside. Yeah, you've seen Metallica live, which is awesome. I have. Yeah, they're spectacular. I feel like Eddie would love Bowie, and maybe that's just because I'm willing it, but... Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah, I think so. And Steve, Steve would definitely like it. I feel like it would be something that they could get along over. Yeah, meet in the middle. I have like one steady playlist that's all like 80s music and then another one that's Ooh. just like steady vibes. Yeah, because like anytime <laughs> I hear the song like Small Town Boy, I think of them dancing in a club. Um, the band The Strike. Oh, Brasky Beat. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those are all good ones. You know, like there's a lot of um, international bands too that just give those synth pop kind of vibes that remind me of them. Oh, that... um. I feel like it was big on TikTok and Instagram, but that Tom O'Dell, Another Love, yeah, that song was so I steady coded for me. You said Tom O'Dell? Yeah. It's from 2013, the album that it's on. So it's like an older song. I got it. It came it right just up. had like a resurgence on social media. Cigarettes After Sex, like anything by Cigarettes After Sex. <laughs> I recently just become obsessed with Kay from Cigarettes After Sex. That's such a good song. Yeah. It's like I remember the first time, like, I realized you really liked me. Like, we just had casual sex. <laughs> them. Yep. Right. That's so many steady fix. Yeah. Also. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mary on a Cross, I feel like, was going, like, viral for Eddie. Soldier Poet King for Eddie, obviously. That's a big one. Oh, The Night We Met. That's a good one vampire diaries but like i feel like it's also steady i love that song oh vampire diaries i know that's like my delena song i'm still trying to turn stacy it's not working yeah, she's she's trying I'm, I'm i'm trying in time um fort f-o-r-e-t fort Devin. fort Devin. yeah they've done a lifeline and hold the night hold the night Oh, yeah, Hold the Night is a good one. Who is it? Obliviated Art. She played them over their her reels, her artwork, and I discovered the band. Oh, Obligated Art, yeah. And I Obligated yeah. Art, and I was like, this is amazing. So, a lot of international bands. That's a lot of, like, Swedish, Norwegian pop. Yeah. Is a lot of, like, what that is. Mm -hmm. I had, like, a Noah Kahan, like obsession I'm, i feel like everybody this year was obsessed with noah kahan but that's probably just because i was but um i thought all of his songs fit really well with steve like i feel like it's very steve harrington coded like just sad boy songs <laughs> like it's a good way to describe it sad boy <laughs> so why don't we talk about what have we been reading guys what have we been reading? Let's let our guest go first. What have you been reading lately? I, I'm at a point now where, like, I will read the tags. And if it says slow burn, I'm, I'm, I'm scrolling. 
<laughs> I'm going. I don't have. I don't. I don't have time for any of that. You know. I prefer like if you read mine, it starts in the middle of it. Like bang, you're there. Yeah. So I'm gonna just say right now, if you typically listen to me and Stacy for just steady Rex, please be forewarned that Brandy also reads. <laughs> <laughs> like re ta- what do, what do you call like Steve Reader and Eddie Reader fix like which is they're they're yes yeah, so good it's not I don't read a ton of them um I have read some or oh, you're specifically steady for the most part I've read okay I've read one that I really like where it's like I guess it's Reader but like I think. It could also just be like an OC, like an original character, but it's um, you go camping with Steve and Eddie, but it's both of them. Like you get both at the same time and they like each other. Like, and that's what I like. <laughs> Which, <Ooh>. I mean, <laughs> it's perfect. Ooh. Yeah. It doesn't get better than that. In like, a tense. It's pretty good. In nature. There was one really fantastic writer on Tumblr and her handle was Hops Girl. Oh my god. And unfortunately the fandom chased her out of Tumblr with just absolute nonsense. Mm-mm. That sucks. Yeah, and she had to deactivate her account. The good thing is is that I um reposted a good bit of her fix so you can still find them on mine. Good to know. Yeah. Yes. Um you just have to scroll back through my stuff. Um but she does these spectacular um there's priest Steve Father Harrington. <laughs> it is so good and just so filthy and so dirty and like eddie takes your virginity and he gets pissed off because he wanted to do it it's a story for the whole family you know? <laughs> it's a story for the whole family <laughs> <laughs> um it's so good and then she does another one with um fertility doctor steve oh girl where like you can't get pregnant so he's banging you in the office um helping He's you take out. one for the team huh? <laughs> i mean she's a couple like really good one shots one of my faves she does is like hate sex it's the one where like he's your neighbor eddie's your neighbor and you can't stand him and he's up all night so she like comes out of her trailer yelling at him and he like flips himself out of the window grabs her and like rails her behind the trailer at like 2 a.m who says romance is dead <laughs> I like the morning berries hate sex in oh. the van, Stacy. I think she's gonna I be think making. That's the one that yep. that she's doing another chapter of. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's my favorite. Oh my god. Um, what is it called? I'll find it for you. I still haven't read Sneaky Links, and Stacy has been. I have not <laughs> shut up about it. <laughs> This is how she did take me, take the money and run. This is how she did me. She would not. I will hound her. It. Yep. Go. And then one day I was like, all right, I will read it. And then like, I think two days later, um, archive went down. Yeah. Oh no. And I was like losing my mind because I was yep. on the very last chapter. The super long epilogue. Yep. Yeah. Um, Hate the way it feels so good. Yep. Is that it? That yeah. sounds marvelous. So they're yeah. working on right now all the things we can't conf- confess, which I just started the beginning of. It's perfection. But they said that they're going to be doing a sequel to that one as well. I'm like, yeah, because it's just a one yeah. shot, but it's so good. And it's like they both are working at the mall and they hate each other. And they like f- like they walk out into the parking lot and then end up in Eddie's van, which lots of great things happen in Eddie's van. <laughs> yep. Yeah, please. <laughs> yep. 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 Don't yep. That. Did you um, finish Sneaky Link? No. Oh. <laughs> You're gonna clutch your pearls. Is it actually oh, done can't. though? Like it's done done. It's done done. Yeah. Um I just don't want it to be over, so I haven't read the last three chapters. Okay, so this is what's gonna happen if for some reason I have a snow day tomorrow. Unlikely I only have a two-hour delay, but if I have a snow day, I promise I'll finish it tomorrow. Good girl. Um, guess what? I finally read. I finally read the um layover in North Dakota. Did you send that to Brandy? No, I haven't. Brandy, hold on. I got you here. <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking here? 
Okay. Wait, did you watch Fargo? You started it. I've, I've done two episodes. Because it doesn't really matter. But it's Gator. It's just some time period where Gator exists and is the same age as Stephen Eddie, you know. Oh, it's both of them? Oh, oh, oh yes. yes. Oh. <laughs> I can't handle two Steve. <laughs> no, but it's, it's, I thought I was, I was skeptical. I was skeptical as well. You can handle it. Oh my gosh, it was so good. It was better than I expected. Yeah, that I'm one obsessed. was wicked. Good. I'm like gonna reread that. Like, all are the time. sex scenes good though? Because nothing's yes. worse than when it like builds and the sex scenes it, and it's like and then they fucked. I've never read a sex scene that good. Like, I mean, I I have, but like they're unique. They're very different than any other sex scenes I've ever read. I don't know how to describe it without giving it away because it's basically just all sex scenes. It's really good smut. That's my kind of smut. That sounds great. That's all I've been reading on Tumblr is um, Gator Fix because they're filthy and kind of trashy, which I love. You know? I love the one where he's banging you. Gator is banging you outside your work, which is a diner. Mm -hmm. And and his your boss comes out because your 15 minutes are over uh -huh. and Gator's like, Gator pulls out his gun and holds As it to your would. ball. Okay. And yep. it's like, I'm not done here. And you're still, he's still banging you the whole time. And of course the boss goes back in and then he just continues to bang you. And then when he's done, he smashes your face in the gravel and leaves you there. At least he didn't do it in the diner because health codes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay, so I'm sending you. I don't know if you'll like this. I thought it was amazing, but it's um a threesome with Eddie and Chrissy, and they invite Steve to join them. <laughs> There'd be nothing left to that girl. <laughs> She's tiny. She's literally 40 pounds. She's literally yeah. in charge in this fic. Like, oh, dear. She's badass. Okay. <laughs> no, yeah, I mostly just read Steve and Eddie, though. I just want them to be in love and happy, and I just get a little window into it. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, I just finished Shadows of the Night, where Steve, 10 years later, I was telling you, Megan, um, figures out he can visit eddie in the upside down and he slowly starts to unravel like every time he does something for eddie a part of his body comes back once the smut hits it gets smutty mcsmutterson <laughs> like oh my god like it gets to the point that's like if steve goes to bed like holding something because he brings things into the dream world every nightmare on elm street to eddie like he starts bringing like lube with him and stuff like because you can't forget that. It's just, wow, what a journey that was. It's 12 chapters, but it's it's pure filth. But very well written, so two thumbs up. You didn't find it interesting that even as a ghost, you need lube? I guess supposedly ghosts need lube, too. <laughs> what do you call it? Ectoplasma? <laughs> I think that's a joke, actually, in the fic. <laughs> okay, so I'm almost finished this fic, and it's like, I think I started telling you about it, but it, it was when we were recording our bonus episode. When I don't touch you, it's a mistake in any life, in each place and forever. So it's a pod fic. The pod fic's beautiful because it has like multiple narrators and music included and stuff. But as always, you could just read it. But when Eddie dies or we think he dies at the end of Stranger Things, it like puts him in to an alternate reality like a parallel universe where like all the characters are still there but and he's with Steve and it's like they have like a coffee shop and a record store and they live in an apartment above the coffee shop and record store and it's just this like sweet ideal life that like they've built together but like Eddie doesn't remember anything he remembers like his life like canon in Stranger Things so he he doesn't really know what's going on and then they all kind of like try to work together to try to figure it out and see like what he's going to do but he starts he starts he still feels the way that like 
the Eddie that he's like inhabiting his body like felt for Steve and is just like but he feels like he shouldn't have this life because he didn't earn it um so I don't know have you read the Midnight Library Brandy um actually yes I read it uh last year it reminded me of that so you know like the main character was like trying on like different lives and they they would just wake up and kind of be in the body of that person that's them but like in an alternate timeline and none of them were quite right yes very similar to that so like so bittersweet and I still don't know that like ultimate conclusion and I won't like spoil anything for like later in the thick either of what happens but it's just so beautiful and like it has these like quotes at the beginning of each chapter that just had me like like crying like listening to them just like that they would find each other in every universe and like Mm -hmm. it's very vampire diaries yes exactly (laughs) I actually gave Andy a a card with that on it where Damon's like you know in every universe in every reality I'd find you and I'd choose you yes exactly I know oh that must be why (laughs) yeah so that's what I'm currently listening to and it's kind of a longer fix sometimes pod fix I kind of try to stick to like shorter ones because this one's taken me like two weeks to like get through it and it's hard when I'm following like a longer fic like that in the car like listening to like read and get in because I started um I come back to the place where you are and so that's so good too but I have gotten like I haven't gotten very far into it it's another author that Stacy and I really like called Pizza Bones. So exciting. But I got to where he's having a dream and it's a little explicit but like I was yeah. like wait what's happening like what fic did I just open like am I reading the right thing because Eddie's still in a Mm -hmm. coma but you don't know that Steve is having a dream you just get to this scene and it was so fun to read because I was like like where am I a little sprinkle of smut (laughs) yeah the phone rings or something and he like is taken out of the dream and he's like oh yeah like I really want this guy like I'm falling in love with him (laughs) so good Can I ask you, what was it like to give JQ your edit? (laughs) You guys are the worst. I was not (laughs) planning on giving it to him. (laughs) Well, like, do it. So first off, it was beautiful. So it was a great edit. So for context, I have a few edits. What are the ones that I had? It was the one with steve in the car that's your favorite and eddie right his hair. Yeah. yeah and it's like eddie like putting the hair his hair across his face and it's like those two pictures together as if eddie's in the car with him instead of like dustin was actually the one he, it's when he's dropping him off at the dance but then i did um family video eddie walking into family video and then also my favorite eddie at the cash register at scoops ahoy so it's those are both like series of like three photos i think and I printed some out just to take the con- to the convention with me. And if I like, I wanted to give some to you guys and just people I met, like just have them to give out to people. And these guys are like, you've got to give it to Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> the devil on your shoulder forever and always. Yep. <laughs> so it's like my first time meeting him, obviously. Well, we got the photo first. Like I got my photo first, which I was glad because then I got him to sign my photo of us nice um but I just had to like rehearse what I was gonna say in my head a million times because otherwise I just would have been like like I wouldn't have said anything um so I did say like what I wanted to say about like being a teacher and how my students were all wanted me to tell him that they're all big fans or something like that too and I was like also I just wanted to give you these I thought they would make you I thought that they would make you laugh I think is what I said and he kind of like glanced at two of them and said like yeah they're really funny (laughs) (laughs) but I didn't say I didn't say like I made them so I didn't know if he realized that I made them or not but but this is the funny part and I was actually thinking about this the other day so then at the panel which did you guys watch the panel I don't think you watched it we didn't no um so at the panel he made a reference to how 
on when they were hanging out. Natalia is really good at photoshopping and would make funny edits. And it just was like, wait, like I just gave you some funny edits. Like, are you thinking of those <laughs> while you're talking? <laughs> Let's see those edits, baby, you know? That was so fun. That was. That, this was a blast. Yeah. Love you all. Bye, yeah, my dear. Bye. Thank you.